President Cheney, and when you and I spoke about a year and a half ago, you expressed some surprise that Cheney wasn't an unindicted co-conspirator in all this. Does that mean then that you believe that this is somehow some sort of cover-up here? Well, I think that today's action is going to support the idea that Scooter Libby was a designated defendant and that he was a surrogate for the vice president. But if you went through the trial, it was all about the vice president. You know, it was, Scooter Libby did, didn't spontaneously decide to do all this. He was sent to a task by Dick Cheney. It was Dick Cheney that was involved in the allegations and whether there was uranium and or whatever being sought after in, in Africa. Dick Cheney ran through this. He was actually the spine of the entire trial, but he wasn't a defendant or an unindicted co-conspirator. And so there was this view among many that Scooter Libby was expected to carry this water for the vice president. What was also very surprising is that Scooter Libby got this incredibly aggressive team that's known for its aggressive tactics in trial. And they, in fact, had a signature plan that they announced. They were going to call Dick Cheney. They are going to really horn into the White House. And then suddenly it evaporated. All the promises, their indications were gone. And they actually had a very sort of staid uh, defense, and they stayed well away from people like Dick Cheney. And many of us thought that that seemed to be an effort to preserve the option for a pardon. He was a loyal soldier all the way through this. The problem with this entire uh, sort of capital drama, you know, it's, it, it's going to strike many correctly as the part of political kabuki. You know, this guy plays this role, saved at the final hour, uh, you know, days from his demise, uh, by a, a grateful king. And the problem is that all along, President Bush says, we've got to let the legal system work. We've got to let the jury make a decision. We've got to let the judges do this. We've got to let this prosecutor do this. But it's going to look like he was only giving them that opportunity so long as they came to the conclusion he wanted. And the very day that that they did not, the very day that even Republicans said, this man needs to go to jail, he then says, well, you know what, I don't agree, so I'm going to change this. And I think that does really undermine the system. It has really very little to do with whether there was an intent to disclose a covert operative's name. He was convicted of lying. And every time his investigators got close to Dick Cheney, the lights seemed to go off in the investigation. So I was not impressed at all with the investigation. But none of that really saved Scooter Libby. I mean, the, the problem is he was convicted of crimes. And this president has been one of the most miserly presidents in history when it comes to pardons. And he is the last guy that I know of that complains about the harshness of sentences. His administration has defended sentences that have been condemned internationally because they're too harsh. Scooter Libby gets, uh, you know... Uh, a, a, you know, a multiple month sentence, and he says, This is too severe for me to tolerate.